In last lesson we started for loop and now we will discuss a few calculations that we can do using the for loop. The first calculation is about counting some event. By event I mean anything happening and we have to count how many times that happened. Let's take a very simple example that we are taking 10 numbers from the user and we have to count how many of those entered numbers are between 10 and 20. Before I do that in coding, let's first see how we should develop the logic for this case. Suppose these are the 10 numbers and if I ask you how many are between 10 and 20, you will have to scan through these numbers starting from the first till the end and you will keep on counting if the number is between 10 and 20. So I'm hiding these numbers for the moment and I'm declaring a variable as count and the value is 0 because at the start we don't know if there is any number between 10 and 20 or not. And now we will start processing the numbers. We will see the first number. The number is 12 which is between 10 and 20. So we will increase the value of this count variable from 0 to 1. Then the next number is 32 which does not meet the criteria. So this time we will not increment the value of count variable. Then the next number is 64 and again we will not increment the count variable. Next number is 15 and it is between 10 and 20. So now we should increase the value of count variable from 1 to 2. So on for the next number. Now again the number is between 10 and 20. So we will increase the count variable to 3. And we will repeat the same logic until the last number is processed. And finally we can say that there were 4 numbers which were between 10 and 20. That is exactly what we will be doing in the program that we will take the number from the user. We will check if it meets the criteria or not and if it does meet that we will increase the count variable. So first I will write the for loop to take the 10 numbers from the user. It is also better to specify the message of the input function, something like enter number 1, enter number 2 and enter number 3 and so on. So I can use the loop variable i over there. So this will take the 10 numbers from the user and now we will implement the logic that we discussed earlier. So I will declare a variable as a count. I can name it anything for example count equal to 0. And then inside the for loop block, when I'm taking a number from the user, I will apply a check on that. I will check if it meets the criteria or not. And the criteria is that a number is between 10 and 20. If that is so, it means that I should increment the value of the count variable by 1. I can do it like count plus equal to 1. So you can see that when we will be out of the for loop on line number 6, the variable count will have the value as total numbers which are between 10 and 20. I think I did a mistake on this condition, so I will correct that. The first number I entered is between 10 and 20. The second is also between 10 and 20. And now this last one is also between 10 and 20. So in total we entered 3 numbers between 10 and 20. And you can see the correct message on the output. Now in the lab manual we have this task number 9. Which is actually not related to the counting calculation. But still it needs some if statement in the for loop. The task says that you have to print all numbers from 1 to 100. Which meet a specific criteria. The criteria is that if you take the square of the number. And the unit and the 10th digit of that square is same. But not 0. For example the square of 12 is 144. So we have 4 on the unit and the 10th place. And that is also not 0. So this 12 should be displayed. So you should have a for loop with the loop variable starting from 1 till 100. Then you will apply this condition on that loop variable i. If it meets the condition, you will simply display that loop variable.
Then we have task number 10 which is related to counting. It says that you will take 10 positive integers from the user and your program should display how many were the even numbers and how many were the odd numbers. So you can have two count variables for this program and depending upon the condition if it is even or the odd number, you can increment the respective count variable. You can do this with the one count variable for example for the even numbers and of course the odd numbers will be 10 minus that count. Now I will give you a task as a review question of this lesson. The task is related to parity bits. We know the digital data is in the form of zeros and ones. When a digital data is communicated from one point to another point, those zeros and ones which are the bits can have some error. By error I mean a zero bit can be changed to a one bit or a one bit can be changed to a zero bit. So there are many ways which are used to detect and identify the errors in the digital data. The simplest of those is the use of parity bits. The parity bits can be even parity or the odd parity. So what we do is that we add one extra bit with the data and that bit is known as the parity bit. So in case of even parity, for a chunk of data, for example for the 8 bits data, which is also known as 1 byte, one extra 9th bit is added into that so that the total number of 1s in those 9 bits is even. So if I have one byte of data as shown over here, you can see there are five ones in this data. So the ninth bit should be one so that a total number of bits become even. So this will be the data after adding the ninth bit. And if we have this data and now the number of ones are already even, so we should add the parity bit as zero so that a total number of ones remain the even. The odd parity concept is just the opposite of even parity, meaning that we have to add the ninth bit so that a number of ones in those nine bits is odd. So for this case the number of ones are 5 which is odd so the parity bit should be 0. And for this case when the number of ones are even the parity bit should be 1 so that the number of ones are odd. So your question is that you will have to take 8 bits from the user one by one with an assumption that user will always enter 0 or 1 and not any other number and then your program should display the even parity and the odd parity bit. This is the sample output of the program. I know this is not the very good way of doing this task. That is by taking the each bit individually. We should actually take the whole byte as one entry from the user and then find the even and the odd parity. There are ways to do that but since we have not studied those, so we will do it like this. So that's all from this lesson. Thanks for watching.